you see my screen? Uh, yes, now we can. Awesome. Okay. So here we go. Uh, so this is a really, really big topic. Uh, it's actually based off of a paper that I wrote when in university. It's a 20 page paper. Uh, so this will be very condensed. Uh, it will be focusing on the representations of mental illness as seen throughout art history. Um, I'm going to use some paintings and art pieces from the early modern period to today. It's very, uh, like I, I've broken it down a lot, so there's not too many paintings I'm actually going to share, but they do have a lot in them, uh, so there certainly is a lot to cover. Um, at the bottom here you'll just see like I might be using terms during this discussion like insane um, and psychiatric like a, a lot of terms the it's important to recognize that it's in line with the times um, and I'll be talking through that as I go so uh, the mind and different mental pathologies are something that is embodied and understood differently depending on the social and historical context so although the the stigma surrounding mental health issues is ongoing uh, it's important to know that when you look at the context throughout history um, there has been it has the view of mental illness and mental disorders have drastically changed over time and we have overall become a more accepting and open community and society uh, so it's important when we're looking at these images we'll realize especially that that wasn't always the case uh, one reason that i really love art and why i think it's important to look at social issues throughout art is uh, it really allows for a really intense uh, contextual history so we'll be learning a lot through the few images that I'm showing. Um, and I think I'll get started on the first image. So here we go. So this is uh, an exer, uh, sorry, this is a image from the early modern period. And when we, when you're looking at the image, you'll see uh, there's a demon escaping uh, to show that it was a successful exorcism. And the two individuals here, which are um, like handcuffed, those are the individuals that are mentally disturbed and they're being healed by the by religion essentially by the religious figure and it was a successful exorcism with the demon escaping so that was the whole that was the perception of mental illnesses at the time it was an evil you had sinned you had done something wrong and through religion through prayer you could repent for your sins and you could be uh, freed of your mental disorders freed from the uh demons inside of you through religion so that was a very clear uh understanding of mental illness at the time there's multiple images usually escaping from the mouth uh, of demons and spirits coming out through there um, so we can assume that he's been cured this man perhaps not moving throughout time uh just a bit ahead, we're in 1494 here. Um, there are a bunch of different therapies for mental health disorders. Uh, so religion was the main piece, the idea that you had done something wrong, you need to repent. If that didn't work, there was always bloodletting uh, or phlebotomy, which is exactly as it sounds. Uh, the idea is to expel like the fluids, your inner, uh, your blood, your bile, like the bodily fluids in order to get rid of the evil and alter your mental state. So what we're seeing in this 
painting here is actually the surgical procedure. And rather than bloodletting or expelling other bodily fluids, in this case, there is essentially a drill going into the skull of the patient. And this is actually a very, uh, it's actually very common as prehistoric, uh, even though this, this painting is from 1494. Uh, it's called trepanation and it's drilling the, a hole in the skull and it's prehistoric uh, looking back and there's archeological evidence of it and it obviously didn't work. <laughs> Uh, it continued for centuries and centuries and uh, it essentially left the person mentally disabled. So you, the patient comes in with severe, uh, a severe mental disorder, for example, uh, a severe evil within them. And the cure was to drill a hole in the skull, let out the evil, and then you're brain dead basically. <laughs> So that's lots of fun. Uh, we're going to move on now. So this is actually the cover of a scientific novel. Uh, scientific novel. <laughs> it's called The Anatomy of Melancholy. What is with all the kinds, causes, symptoms, prognostics, and several cures. Uh, so this is the cover of the book. Uh, in the one corner here, we can see religion is very important. And this is in 1628. Um, and then there's some images of uh, flowers and different uh, disorders uh, on the cover. We're going to jump ahead again. This is the madhouse. And in this painting, by William Hogarth, we see two sane women that are actually walking through for fun, for amusement, in a sane asylum. So the individuals around uh, have been made to look crazy or hyper. Uh, it's a joke. It's uh, something fun for these two rich ladies to do on a Sunday afternoon is stroll through the madhouse and laugh at those that are suffering from mental health disorders. Um, and it's uh, set in Bedlam, which is uh, one of the most prolific madhouses in history and where patients were horrifically abused and they were conf confined to uh, like crowded living quarters. Uh, I'm just going to jump ahead. Let's see. Yep, here's another madhouse uh, painting. Uh, what we, what I forgot to say is uh, in this image you can see the shackles. Uh, they were often treated as prisoners, as uh, criminals. And there was a very big, uh, very blatant dehumanization that happened. Uh, something that I wanted to add is that uh, psychiatrists uh, were historically known as alienists. And in Latin, alias is a word signifying other. And in French, alien translates to insane. So alienists were doctors of the insane. Uh, just a cool side note on that. Doctors of the insane and they were treated, uh, people were treated horrifically. Jumping ahead to 1881, uh, there's more of a human aspect being depicted of those who are have, do, who do have mental disorders, and uh, there's more of more empathy. So in this uh, portrait of a woman suffering from obsessive envy, uh, it was actually a series of ten paintings uh, done by Jericho, and the idea was to 
take more of an individual look at those suffering to see if they can find a a trait within the the uh, the look of the person, I guess the um, I'm blanking on words here. Sorry. Um, it was a, essentially we're moving towards a more humane portrayal of mental health disorders. When we moving throughout further ahead, 1893, 1901, 1889, uh, the period of post-impressionists very much so uh, highlighted projected their um, their inner emotions and their expression became a lot more fluid. And throughout history, we've seen pictures of those who are mentally disturbed being depicted in the in the uh, post-impressionist era, we start to see artists that actually do have mental health disorders making their own art about themselves, about their world, and their experiences. Uh, I also like to focus on uh, my own mental health disorder in my art, and it's something that I think is very uh, therapeutic in a lot of ways. And as we move throughout history, when we're talking about today, uh, that is a very common theme of artists using art as a way of self-expression, as a therapeutic measure to uh, help them. <laughs> so I'm going to end it there. Um, I skipped over a lot of things, but I hope that uh, you enjoyed it and we're able to get something out of that presentation. Thanks so much.